Yesterday's auction was just amazing. Uh, first of all, we didn't expect such a large number of participants coming from virtually every corner of the world. In fact, there were some faces that we haven't seen for some time because simply you cannot mobilize them unless you've got some truly exceptional pieces. Mechanical watches, vintage and antique watches, are special because even though today robots and computers can reproduce nearly anything in unlimited quantities, it still takes the hands of a skilled watchmaker, sometimes during months, sometimes even during years, to make such a technical marvel. And that limitation, natural limitation, I think is very much reassuring and so fascinating to uh, collectors in 2010 because they know that it is somehow a witness from past generations in a very modern and fast and dynamic world. We t called this collection a connoisseur's vision since it took two very important ingredients to put that collection together. I will accept all 60. Connoisseurship, you can also call it specialist knowledge, is something you can only develop if you spend quite substantial time studying the subject and learn about the subject. The vision is what it takes when you are looking into the future, envisaging what may future generations appreciate. I'll take 480, but not less. 480 accepted, 480,000. Yesterday's auction was an amazing experience, I must admit. First of all, we had a number of bidders coming from virtually five continents uh, to an extent with passion as we have never experienced it before. I believe we counted over 800 participants bidding either in the room or by telephone or by absentee bits, or by internet bits. It is really reassuring to see how season after season this market grows and how all comes together uh, here in a sale room in Geneva when people are thousands of miles away. The first watch of yesterday's auction I'd like to show you is the top lot of the auction. It's a Patek Philippe from 1953, which was never on the market before. And we discovered it uh, earlier this year. We had to fight for it to get it. And eventually the owner decided to entrust us with the sale. We researched it, we photographed it in all different ways. We studied it, went to all possible archives to find information about it. Had an auction estimate of 1.5 to 2.5 million Swiss francs on it and eventually yesterday it was bought by an Asian collector after a seriously fierce battle for over 2.7 million US dollars, establishing a new world record for such a two crown world time wristwatch by Patek Philippe. The next watch I would like to show you is a highly unusual watch. It's a coach watch from 1783 that means it's over 200 years old. It was made for an Ottoman dignitary. We can see the Turkish numerals. It's a massively built, all gold and enamel pocket watch. The outer is beautifully enameled in translucent blue enamel with diamonds resembling stars. The center panel uh, depicts a night sky with the moon, the star and the rising sun. It must be a specific moment in time when these uh, planets uh, meet in that stellar combination. We do not know what exactly the date or the moment in time was uh, that it shows, but it must have been a key moment in someone's life to freeze that moment on the back of this watch. We had an estimate, a starting estimate of 180,000 francs on it, and after a fierce battle amongst several museums and collectors, 
it eventually sold to a gentleman who was ready to go up to $700,000, which was the final result. A watch that we understand is unique, quite unique to be precise. In fact, Cartier made four watches similar to this one. One which is set completely with emeralds, one which is set completely with sapphires, one which is set completely with diamonds, and this one here set with rubies. The side are set with rubies, the back shows beautifully the skeletonized and finely sizzled movement. We offered that watch yesterday at 50,000 francs, and after quite a hefty battle amongst several collectors, in particular from Italy, but also from the UK, Russia, Asia and the United States, it went to an amateur who was ready to pick it up at just over $100,000. Yesterday's Christie's auction had quite a number of truly exciting moments when the fighting got really intense amongst the com uh, competing collectors. And I'm now introducing you a watch that was possibly one of the hottest uh, moments of yesterday's auction. Possibly the largest chronograph by Audemars Piguet anyone has ever seen. There was never any mention in literature of something similar. Uh, there was never an auction catalogue listing a comparable watch. When the auction started, bids came from all over the place. At the end of the day, once the hammer came down, at nearly seven times the auction estimate, at just under $400,000, they were congratulating each other, hugging each other. It was a great time for collectors yesterday. An auctioneer from the past said, auctioneering is the hottest thing you can do with your clothes on. And I can pretty much agree with him. It's quite exciting. Alex, dernière chance, 42 000. 45,000, new winner. I believe that collectors love that very romantic aspect of a mechanical wristwatch and as much as it might be uh, very contradictory to our uh, dynamic and uh, fast evolving world this is for many a bar to hold on to uh, in, in this world. 